Hey everyone, it is Irene Lyon here and welcome to this entire world of nervous system health and healing. And before I dive into the seven myths that I want to debunk around nervous system health and healing and, and really healing trauma, I want to make a time, a very time sensitive update notice. And that is that starting on February 14th, which is tomorrow, 2023 for one week and one week only my team and I will be opening enrollment to new members to smart body smart mind smart body smart mind is my 12 week curriculum online program that my team and I have been running for many years this year in 2023 is the 13th lucky number 13 time 13th time we've run this powerful online program that has been used and experienced by thousands and thousands of people all around the world. And um, I wanna make sure you do not miss this opportunity to get in this year. We are not sure yet if we're gonna run another round in 2023. So if you know that you do want to dive deep with me, maybe you're already doing some of my work, my classes, my 21 day nervous system tune up. Maybe you've been taking in my videos and you are ready to make that next step to really deeply learning and practicing and getting support, then this is the time. So I will link near this video, the registration information page. And like I said, we are only opening registration for one week. All right, let's dive into these myths, these myths about healing trauma. There are seven of them that I want to cover. I'm going to name them first, and then I'm going to break them down. And I'm going to make them quite short because I have other pieces of information, other videos that coincide with each myth. So I want to do more of a, as we would say here in Canada, a Coles Notes version in the US, you might call it Cliff Notes version, just really bullet point, small little pieces on these seven myths. So the first one is that you do not need theory to restore regulation to your nervous system. The second myth is you have to heal in relationship to another person. Not true, and I'll explain why. Myth number three, breath work can regulate your nervous system. Number four, you need to instigate a shaking response to heal your nervous system and regulate trauma. Five, you need to feel safe and ready to begin. Not true. And number six, you can reset your nervous system. Another word that sometimes people will say is reboot. I'll speak as to why that is not possible. And finally, lucky number seven, if there is such thing as another lucky number, love and hope is all you need. Let's go to number one. So the first myth is, is that you don't need theory. I've already done a video on this previous years on why non-dumbed down education is essential for us humans in this modern world with our higher brains. In other words, we need more than just understanding we have a stress response and it goes up and it goes down and there's this thing called sympathetic and parasympathetic. We need the full, full picture and some jargony uh, material, understanding what the vagus nerve is, the different branches of the vagus nerve because they're not all the same. We need to understand how our system either did or did not get good primary wiring when we were little. All the different kinds of traumas that humans survive and live through, there are quite a few, there is not just one, um, and so much more. Now the reason why theory is important is because of our complexity as human beings, we have not been brought up all exactly the same. I used this example before, I'll share it quickly. If you were a tiger or a bear or some other form of mammal in the wild, how you were raised, say, in one country in the world will be exactly the same as your cousins of that same animal family on another continent. We can all agree with that. Humans are a bit different and because humans are different, because of culture and society and parenting books and the dysregulations that we carry in our system, how we interact with our young varies tremendously. And in my opinion, and in the opinion of many, it should not vary, at least in those first couple 
few years of life, three years of life, because the human infant is not regulated. They do not have self-regulation. They don't walk, they don't talk, they don't know how to feed themselves. So because of this, as adults who are here wanting to learn how to regulate and restore nervous system regulation and heal trauma and grow all these things, um, the path is not gonna be linear. While I teach a path that is similar to all of my students, what occurs in our physiology is gonna vary. And because of that, we need to understand what might be happening when, when we might say, hey, usually this um, exercise creates this effect or this is what it's doing, but there are some times when this not might, might not be true. And so in order to say, teach that said exercise, I call them neurosensory exercises, we need to give a person kind of a menu of what potentially might occur and in doing that, we teach the person about their nervous system, how it responds to what we would call stimulation, the environment, et cetera. I did another video on this in greater depth called why non-dumbed down education is essential when healing the nervous system. So to be sure, be sure to check that out. Number two, you have to heal in relationship to another person. So remember, these are myths that I'm trying to debunk um, and bust. Now, Relationships are essential. Human beings are meant to be in connection. If I go back to that animal example, however, not all of us were brought into the world with attuned, caregiving, safe, secure, regulated parents or care caregivers. Chances are, because you're watching this and you're interested in this work, you did not have good, safe connection with your primary caregiver. So let's just say someone is living with what we would call early and developmental trauma. It is essential that that person understand that their view of the world is maybe, and I generalize here, but for the most part, not safe. And other humans, even though intellectually they know that person isn't gonna hurt me, they're not so sure at the cellular level not just the unconscious mind, but the cellular body has a script, has a program that says people bad. Early interactions with people were terrible, therefore not safe. And so the last thing we want to do is throw someone into a one-on-one -on -one partnership to try to get the healing to get started. Now, I'm not saying that having a therapist or a counselor or someone to talk to isn't important. But this notion that we only heal in relationship, in my opinion, professionally and personally, is false. Now there's some caveats to this. We wanna heal in relationship to ourselves. And many people, when they have dysregulation, they are not aware at how disconnected they are from themselves and the environment around them. This is why the foundations and foundations and foundations of my online programs is to teach you, obviously the education, that's number one myth, but then how to reconnect with your body in subtle, little, connected, somatically inclined ways, as well as how do you connect to your environment? How do you connect and relate to the environment? How do you relate to your body moving through space? How do you relate to the food you're eating? How do you relate to weather patterns? How do you relate to, we could maybe say, just people in stores, the checkout person, the person that you might um, have an interaction with whom is not your partner or a therapist, but is just another human in the world. So one of the things I'll often say to folks who know they had early trauma and it was in relationship is in addition to connecting to your body and growing a relationship with it and the environment, start to see how you can make engagement and make connection with strangers who seem relatively okay. Okay, now I've also got other videos on this topic, um, one on toxic relationships and also one on setting boundaries. I will post those below. Number three, three, breath work. Breath work can regulate the nervous system. Now, when I started talking about this well over five years ago, I got a lot of slack for talking about 
why taking a deep breath is not enough to heal trauma and restore regulation to the system. All we have to go do is go back to the baby. Baby is not regulated, not self-regulated. To grow regulation, you cannot say to an infant, I need you to take a deep breath and exhale slowly. It will not work. The only way, well, not the only way, but one of the primary ways that we teach a child how to, or a baby, how to find ease and safety and what we would call self-regulation is through co-regulation, through connection with that primary caregiver. And with that attunement and with that primary caregiver giving the baby what it needs, what its somatic physiology needs, it then takes a deep breath spontaneously, organically, and that's what we want to teach the human system, us as adults when we're doing this. Now, breathing is important. I'm doing it right now, as are you. There are some times when breath work can be therapeutic. We could say going for a walk is some form of breath work, doing interval training, um, sitting and just noticing our breath. There's nothing wrong with that, but it alone cannot regulate and heal a dysregulated nervous system. I did another video on this earlier this year. It came out on January 2nd, um, all around breath work and how it connects to the nervous system and regulation. It was very popular, so I suggest you check that out if this is of interest to you. Number four, myth number four, you need to instigate a shaking response to heal trauma and to reset, to reboot, to regulate the nervous system. I use reset and reboot kind of as a joke because I'm going to bust that myth soon or debunk that myth soon. Now, shaking is a natural human response. It's a natural mammalian response at times but it depends on the kind of trauma a person has. So this goes back to point number one. When you have education on board, you know that when there's more early, let's say trauma, developmental trauma, and there wasn't that connection and safety, when there wasn't that, that someone is here for me, the kind of trauma that occurs after that is what we would call developmental early there is this general essence that this person grows into the world with that is just, the world is not safe. The world is a dangerous place. I have to protect myself. We're all potentially gonna die and no one can be trusted. That's kind of a programmed script that is not just in the mind and the unconscious, but in the cells of someone who was brought into the world with this kind of unsafety. That does not usually create the need to shake in the way that we might if say we were being chased by an attacker or a bear or um, some other form of big shock trauma where the system is hit with a lot of intensity or a need to flee right um, that might need a shaking response but the little person which so many of us had early in developmental trauma even surgical trauma um, there might not be at that, that young age, the developed fight flee response, what that little one needs to process as an old adult, per, not necessarily old, but as a big person is potentially the feeling of terror, the feeling of freeze or the qualities of freeze, of fear, of panic, of, uh, I think I'm going to die and I'm frozen, right? It might lead to a shaking response. But there's this notion right now in the world of somatics, if we want to call it that, that we have to get that shaking response. Now, again, sometimes that's essential. I've experienced myself uh, dealing with various shock traumas and accidents. Um, but when I've been dealing with more, um, how shall we say, uh, li tiny little baby somatic qualities, they don't have a lot of these big movements. They are very... Um, so often soft and subtle with deep emotional visceral um, pain um, and so again everyone's different but just know that you don't have to shake it out and if anything we don't want to instigate and try to poke a shaking response out of the person i did a video a little while about uh, a little while ago on this titled does shaking heal trauma um, be sure to check that one out. And another great article, so this is a video that I made, that one,
but a good article my husband wrote on why there is no one exercise to heal trauma. I encourage you to read that one as well for more information. All right. Oh, one more thing I'll, I will say. Number one and number four really connect because when you have the education on board and you understand how to track your physiology and you become what I like to call an apprentice of your nervous system and you're becoming your own medicine, you track internally the physical, visceral, sensory-based feeling quality that might instigate and allow a shaking response to come out naturally. And when that happens, that is magic because it shows that the body is organically healing and releasing those traumas without any force. And when we try to force something, you know, there's a million metaphors we could give you here, but I won't. You know, you've tried to force something to happen. It might happen, but it won't be done in the way that your system really wants. And often there'll be remnants and residue left that aren't quite healed and integrated. All right, number five, you need to feel safe and ready to begin. So again, this is a myth. I don't know how many times I get comments and DMs and I see questions that come in through these various feeds. Um, I, I need to wait till I'm more safe. I need to wait till I feel safe to begin this work. Now, there might be one exception to this and the exception would be if you are literally in a war-torn zone and you are truly in survival mode 24 seven because of famine and and natural disaster and bombs going off and the chances of you dying and your family not surviving, then 100%, this is not the time to do the kind of work that I'm talking about here. I hope that eventually, if you fit that, if you're in that situation, um, you eventually get out of that physical um, unsafety and then you can heal and do the necessary steps to regulate your system and come back to what we would call homeostasis or baseline. But let's just say that's not the case. And um, you know that you've got a pretty safe environment. There's food in the fridge, there's electricity. Um, yes, your relationships might have some strain, but they're not toxic. This is what's interesting. Safety and deep cellular safety often is not the first thing to come on board. It takes time and foundation to teach the system that everything is A-OK, -okay, that everything really is safe and not from that intellectual level that says I'm safe, yes, no bombs, no guns, no crazy people, there's food, there's electricity, I have money in the bank which we need to survive, all these things. You might intellectually know that and you really are in that kind of physical safety, but internally there is again this script that's saying, world isn't safe, I'm not safe, that was how I was imprinted from an early, early age. To flip that 180 degrees, to create deep regulation and safety as an adult, and it's completely possible, you gotta just start. And it's kind of like a human being, again, go back to the baby, when they come out, they are not talking and walking and creating. They are an immature nervous system that needs a lot, a lot of help and care and connection and teaching, right? So if we flip that, you wouldn't expect a baby to be fluent in speaking like I am or listening in the way you are or any of those things. It's kind of like that. To build up that deep safety and cellular regulation, we have to start with baby steps. But then over time, it does grow. One of the better conversations um, that I've had in the last sort of 12 months is with my husband, Seth. It's called The Dysregulated Effects of Parenting. It's a longer one, but it's good. Um, we did that, I think it was in September of 2022. We'll post that. But Seth is a great example of someone who did not have cellular safety in his home life, entire home life, and he talks about it in this video. And he now, as an adult at 49 years old, has deep cellular safety. His system is not living in complex PTSD anymore. No more social anxiety, no addictions, drive in life, um, all these sorts of things. And so that is a, a lovely case study of someone who was not well and was totally not safe 
and just started doing these pieces slowly over time, over time. And in our talk, he will say it took about seven years for him to land in that beautiful space of, oh, I, I am cellularly safe. Now, of course, along that journey, there were so many wins and so many improvements. His digestion got better, social anxiety disappeared. He started to make money, relationship with me, all these things, better parent, all these things. But it was the last thing to come in. So I just wanna make everyone understand that this stuff takes time to grow, but it can happen and it just needs that commitment and that patience and of course the right the right stuff, the right education and practices. Number six, myth number six, you can reset your nervous system. I hate this term, reset your nervous system. I don't mind the, the term reset or reboot for my computer, that kind of thing, reset the thermostat. You cannot reset or reboot a nervous system. You just can't. It would be like saying you can have a, a brand new baby and you just flip a switch and they are regulated. That does not occur. So I'm not sure why we've gotten into using this term reset um, or reboot. Again, machines can reset and reboot, not human beings, not even animals. We can regulate, we can restore, we can repair, we can reinvigorate, we can rejuvenate all these R words. Um, but again, you just can't reset. And um, that's really all I wanna say about that. I did do another video on this, on why we can't reset the nervous system. Um, I think it's a word that we just throw out. And I do think words are important because if someone believes that they can reset their nervous system, it's possible that they're looking for that quick fix, that biohack that will just pop their system back into regulation. And as far as I've seen in all of my career, this is not gonna occur. Just like you can't reset your fitness, right? Think about it that way. You can't reset your fitness, you can't reset your nutrition. Um, these things take time. It's about longevity and lifestyle. And with that, you then create regulation in the system. And then when you have regulation in the nervous system, you can bounce back a lot quicker but even someone who has strong, resilient nervous system regulation, if they get into a car accident, they're not just gonna walk away and go, poof, I'm better. They're going to need to do the things to reorient, reground. There might be that shaking response and it takes time. Now for some, if I use that example, they might get their regulation back within a day. For some who have less regulation, it can throw them off for months and for some people years. So again, myth number six, you can reset your nervous system. No, you cannot. Number seven, myth number seven, love and hope is all you need. Now, I got nothing against love and I got nothing against hope. Those are important. But I do see in some of the, we could say influencer worlds, worlds when there is a tragedy or there is a friend um, that has a tragedy or something like that, um, there's this plea, everyone, come on, we have love, have hope, we can get through this. Here's the problem with this. If you are talking about someone who has dysregulation in their nervous system, they don't have a map for true hope and safety and peace and love and regulation. It doesn't exist. And so I've used this example before um, when talking about a system that has been wired in a certain way and of course can unwire and rewire. But if you say to someone who is deep in dysregulation, deep in, let's say, shutdown, deep in fight flight, some form of functional freeze, and their system is just in chaos, and you say to them, them um, or let's just use this example, say use totally different example, metaphor here, Let's just say someone is trying to get from uh, Milan to Rome in Italy. And you're like, this is all you need. You have a car, you have plenty of fuel, you've got snacks, water, all these things. Everything is here. Here you go. And you give the person the key and they're like, I don't know how to drive a car. So you could give them all these things, but if they don't know how to drive that car, they're not going to get 
to Rome from Milan. Now, if we think about the human system, the system is there, it's whole, right? You've got your organs, so the person is whole, but they have dysregulation in the system. So in other words, giving them the, the, the keys, just have hope, just have faith, have, you know, love is all you need. It's like that. It's like saying, here is everything you need, have at her. And then they don't know how to integrate that stuff or even feel it because it's never been part of their chemical, neurobiological soul makeup, right? Maybe not the soul makeup, but that biological level in that lifetime. So... Again, nothing wrong with love and hope, but we have to look at what is stored in their system. There might be a lot of anger. There might be a lot of grief. There might be a lot of what we would call stored procedural traumatic memories. So these memories that are stored in our bodies, in our nervous systems that want to fight, that want to run, that want to scream bloody murder, that want to kill some other person because we were harmed and we had to hold it all in because we just didn't have the capacity to fight. This is one of the conundrums of folks who are attacked, right? Is they, they know that what happened wasn't right and they don't get a chance to release that animal mammalian fight flight instinct to defend. Um, and then we're told to, you know, forgive, forget, be calm, send love and light to that person who hurt you. That does not work in the animal kingdom. And we have to remember we are animals and humans, but we're animals at our physiological base layer. So we need to, again, this is where number one comes in, that education, we need to really assess what are the pieces, what are the stressors, what are the traumas, what are the hurts that are sitting inside. We still need to have that higher brain that says, killing that person is not good, do not do that. You know, don't hit child, animal, don't destroy the house, don't do something reckless, like that has to come online. But then we also wanna have with intelligence and we could say smartness, this capacity and this desire to work on these stored traumatic imprints at that biological and neuromuscular sensory motor level. Of course, along with, if it, if it works, love, hope, faith, and a determination to keep going. But we have to, we have to work at this biological level. If we do not, all the stuff that we try to do to behavior change and think positively will be squashed by the biology. The biology always rules. And so when we can heal that biology, or we could say physiology for the human, when we can heal that nervous system, when we can repair and regenerate and rejuvenate and do all those R words, um, we start to get that robustness and that capacity back and we free the system up of these past yucks that we just keep for so, so long. Interestingly enough, when we start to free up space within the system, we then feel a different kind of quality. Our empathy improves, our love does improve, our capacity to have hope and plan shifts, but it's done, it's done with more accuracy if that makes sense. It's more laser-like because it's not being clouded by this biology that is still stuck in survival mode. So it is so important to know that it is not enough to say, say to someone who's having a hard time, have hope, right? We need to be like, what's going on? What are you feeling? What are you sensing? What could this be? Um, so I hope that one makes sense. I did a video a long time ago on why gratitude, I believe, is not enough. Might have been love and gratitude. And um, it's still getting lots of comments and views. So I'll post that below. I'm a little younger in that video, obviously. Um, but it still, it spells out the importance of working at this nervous system, neurobiological, somatic level. All right, friends. There are your seven myths that I wanted to debunk today around healing the nervous system, healing trauma, restoring 
and regenerating our system. Like I said, many of these have other videos that you can link out to to get a deeper dive into that topic. If one of these really sparked your curiosity, I encourage you to do that. They're near, near here on the show more section. And as I said at the top of this video, this week, starting on the 14th um, of February, 2023, for one week to the 21st, I believe, we have Smart Body, Smart Mind open up for registration. Every single topic I talked about today, and of course more, we cover not only theoretically, but at a practical, somatic level, a foundational level. I hope you check out this program. And then of course, if you're listening to this well after this fact, when we have closed registration, on my site will tell you when we are gonna run the next one. And of course, you can always start at any time. My 21 day nervous system tune up course, this is self-study. Um, it is self-paced. It is 21 days of learning, lessons, exercises. It has support. My team are in there helping you and answering questions around the course content and your experience in that course content uh, weekly. So you aren't alone. And it is one wonderful way to start if you are hearing this after we've closed enrollment for Smart Body, Smart Mind in 2023. Thank you so much for being here and we will see you next time.